is the minimum requirement of romantic on-screen romantic content for a story to be considered a romance fantasy or a romance insert genre here. I'm a flower in the bloom, like a shower. another vlog i know in my last vlog i said i was starting a new book starting my new cyberpunk book and and i have started it but i have also randomly i'm back in a fantasy mood i kind of got like struck with an urge to just make progress on my fantasy book um which i have been brainstorming working on on and off for like the last six months or so i keep putting off this fantasy book because I always just like get a different idea and then I pursue that. But I, I think I genuinely want to make some progress on this fantasy book this week and see if I can kind of like settle into it. I typically don't write multiple books at once, but when my attention starts getting pulled in different directions, I just try to like follow my heart and eventually something sticks. I guess just background information if you're new here, I've started writing a an adult fantasy book called uh, the Floating House, it's a working title. Floating House is a really heavy revision of a book that I wrote a couple years ago called, well I never actually titled it, it was called Project Night, I think. God, I'm like already forgetting. I wrote that, I actually vlogged a lot of that. Um, it was a while ago now, but I did vlog it. That, and Project Night was the second book that I ever finished writing. A hot mess, I think I finished it, it was a little underwritten, I think, but I finished it at around 90, 95k, and then I shelved that project. I wrote a cyberpunk book called Local Heavens. It is a queer sci-fi retelling of The Great Gatsby. Documented that whole writing process, and then I started brainstorming and I outlined and started drafting a new cyberpunk book, kind of like a sapphic cyberpunk heist sort of story. Project Night, um, I had always wanted to revise it. I started revising it and then decided that it needed a much bigger edit, I guess. And I had decided this a while ago. I think I was in the middle of querying Local Heaven. So that was like summer of last year, summer 2023. Um, I was querying Local Heavens for about a month. During that time, I wanted to revise my fantasy, but I just felt like I had grown so much as a writer since the first time that I started writing Project Night. I just didn't feel like the ideas were interesting enough. Six weeks that I was querying, I developed like a whole new magic system. I developed kind of a whole new plot as well. Um, changed the characters, expanded the cast, um, and then I had to kind of shelve my brainstorming for a while after I signed with my agent um, just so that I could work through all the revision rounds that I needed to work through uh, for Local Heavens. But now that I'm kind of like done those revision rounds um, and I can kind of work on whatever I want to work on, I feel pressured to like commit to a project write my next book as fast as possible. Also, I don't want to feel like I'm forcing anything. I have no commitments, no deadlines, so I want to work on whatever my heart is telling me to work on, and this week it happens to be fantasy. Um, I want to make some slight changes to my outline, and I also want to outline it um, a little bit more, in a little bit more detail, because the outline that I finished writing last year, it's good, but there are some gaps. Um, there's like a couple things that I want to add to one of the magic systems. So there's just things that I need to figure out, and over the next few days, what I want to do is get through a good portion of this new outline. Um, I think a lot of things are going to stay the same, uh, yeah, but I just want to feel a little bit more organized. writing update. Yeah, I was able to actually get through most of my re-outlining that I wanted to do and hopefully after work I can maybe make some progress on the draft. It's been a while since I've been like looking forward to a writing session. I survived. It was so ugly outside. I got my bread. One thing that I was also trying to think about uh, as I was re-outlining the floating house was if it's at all possible for me to pitch this book as a romanticy. I think a part of me is quite 
nervous to pitch it that way. It would be very fun to attempt to write one because I, I never have. But one thing about me is I, I feel like I always forget to like make the main pairing interact. <laughs> what is the minimum requirement of romantic, on-screen romantic content for a story to be considered a romance fantasy or a romance insert genre here. And the other thing is that I'll be honest, I don't write happy endings that often. By the way, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter or Instagram, I met Rachel in person. Rachel and I have been like online friends for I guess a couple years now, I don't really know. Um, so it was very surreal to meet her in person. I met her at a book event. So I met Lizelle, she was like having an event along with two other authors. Um, it was super cool. Um, I've loved both of their channels for so long. So like meeting them in person was so cool. But anyways, um, one thing that, one question that these authors were asked at this panel was, do you like happy endings or tragic endings? Like if you had to pick one. And I was thinking about that question for myself and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I love a tragic ending. Not that I always write tragic endings or anything like that, but what I do like is endings with consequences and endings where characters have had to sacrifice things in order to grow emotionally, physically, spiritually. And a lot of the times that manifests in endings that aren't necessarily happy. But yeah, it just got me thinking like, I think one of the reasons why I have historically sucked at romance is because I never think about like, should I give my characters a happy ending? It's always like, oh, I want the, this bad thing to happen to my character. And um, happy endings are sort of like contractually obligated from a romance. Like that's what it means to write a romance is that the happily ever after is you make that promise to a reader and maybe not like a traditional happily ever after, but as in like both people are alive and together in some way, right? So anyways, I was just thinking about that as I was like outlining the floating house and what I want these, how I want these two characters to like be at the end, like where are they as individuals? Cause there's something that I want, there's two main characters in this book, there's Valerie and Elijah. I want Elijah to end up in a very specific place at the end of this book. You know, it's not a tragic ending by any means, but it's also like definitely not the ending that he it's definitely not where he envisions himself. I did have a point that I was trying to make, but I forgot what the point is. So we'll see what happens. I'm just trying to have a silly goofy time um, and just trying not to like take things too seriously because I think that's one thing about my sci-fi is that I don't really know how to explain this without sounding weird. <laughs> with my sci-fi, okay, I have to figure out how to explain this because it makes sense in my head, but I feel like with my sci-fi, I think very deeply about the social commentary of the piece. And I think a lot of that just has to do with the fact that my sci-fi ideas are usually born out of like very specific experiences that I've had. Don't really consider my sci-fi stories to be escapist in the way that my fantasy while of course it does it does have themes because every story has themes um there's something that feels a little bit more for me as the writer escapist about fantasy i think both writing experiences are very valid and i love both sometimes i am in the mood to just like have fun with my stories while i do have a lot of fun with my sci-fi stories i have to like be in the right headspace for them that's just how i've been feeling you know this is gonna be my unsolicited uh really really janky little mood board chat so i like to design everything in Figma. Sounds like I'm freaking running uh, a Figma ad. I'm not. If Figma would like to sponsor me, hit me up. Every mood board is just gonna be compiling photos that you like. I usually compile photos even if I know I'm not gonna use them. I just kind of like to get a whole bunch. Some of these are like really, like a lot, like a lot of these ones here. I pulled these like a couple years ago now when the plot of this book was very different. So yeah, a lot of like mood boards, you'll just do like a collage of, I don't know, nine photos. So each of these is like a little square. Just mask these and whatever. I'm just gonna put together a whole bunch of these.
And the one thing that I like to think about with mood boards, and I think this is a huge thing, is just like color palettes. So this is a pretty inconsistent color palette. If I was going super crazy, I would pull some of these photos into Photoshop. Um, but Photoshop is also expensive and not everyone has access to it. So you can also just play with the color sliders in Figma itself. On my Local Heavens page is extremely terrible right now. This is the mood board that I made, the first mood board that I made for Local Heaven. Color palette doesn't really match, but the aesthetic is there. It's fine. Got me an agent solicit on Twitter. So you don't have to be very good as long as you have a visual and you know uh what photos uh you want to pick and the second mood board that i made for local heavens was this one anyways um i was making another mood board for the floating house today and if you want to like get a little fun the new photos that i pulled are like these ones and i really like these I just tried to pull like a couple, if I think about the story, I try to try to imagine like key visuals of the project. So for something like the floating house, walking on water is something that these characters are doing at a certain point in the book. Elijah has like a ring that's very important to his character. Um, the moon is a motif uh, a little bit in the book, so I pulled like that image. And then just some like really nice grand interior I could kind of like represent the house um, and then usually one or two like character portraits are kind of nice I've picked one two three four five six photos and I kind of want to do like a longer mood board so not necessarily a square so I think Figma says the Twitter dimensions are 1200 by 675 so I'll keep that but I'm gonna double the height and then I just kind of start laying things out and see if I like like the way they look together and what do I want like the biggest visuals to be so these colors are all pretty close to each other but they could I just want to tweak them a little bit so they're all more on the warmer tone side this one has like it's warm but has like a nice green undertone i'm gonna up the contrast because i think it makes it look nice and bold but it's a little green as well it's still a little green i'm gonna go temperature up and then i'll just slide until some of the green gets a little lessened i think i'll do here so i if i adjust this tint it's looking a little more green so i guess i'll do that kind of matches better than it did previously so if you were to look at it like this is kind of like a before and an after um this one oh this one's already adjusted a bit this one i like this photo but she's a little like she doesn't have she looks a little softer than like this photo which is like starker i don't know that one's a little bit odd but as long as it's kind of all there. This one's really blue. It just adjusted like literally just with the color sliders in Figma. I don't have to go too crazy. So I usually like to start with like any character photos that I've pulled. And the other thing is that I don't like to use actual faces because I don't necessarily see Elijah looking like this. I don't necessarily see Valerie looking like this. It's more just a mood board is literally just for aesthetic. If I pull photos that have faces in them, I crop the faces a little bit. But I kind of like the elusiveness of cropping faces out. So I'm going to crop just so it's like literally just maybe the tip of his eyes. Actually, I think I'm going to crop his eyes out too. Um, so you don't quite know where he's looking. I really just like the shape of this smoke, I guess. And I'm also going to crop her face out as well. And um, this moon, actually the moon should be at the top. I want to kind of crop this flower part out because it's like not really relevant to the story. That should be good. As long as you can kind of see the water motif, I don't know. It's exterior to be like, I really like the chandeliers. I also like how this looks a little bit like water because that's like kind of what the interior of the house looks like. Okay, yeah. So honestly, this works as is. I'm gonna pull some lorem ipsum. Lorem ipsum. Da, da, da. Okay. Boom. You can lorem ipsum. Put a quote here, a floating house. 
I like really unbalanced typography um, because I, I'm like never allowed to do it in corporate. <laughs> Maybe a shorter quote. I don't know, you can lay out. Anyways, so there's something like that or and then with this quote box, I like rounded corners. I don't know. Do we like rounded corners? Ooh, oh wait, we should do like a, what's it called? Like a paper texture. I have an idea. Then you take this paper and mask it. And it's looking a little gray. I'm gonna make it warmer. I'm gonna do a drop shadow. Actually, I'm gonna do a white drop shadow. Slight halo on it. Which I feel is a little weird. Maybe we'll just like lessen it. I also just pulled this tape from Google. But I'll, it's like a little sticky tack. Then you can lorem ipsum. Actually like a little softer black, so maybe like a gray, dark, dark gray. Looking a little harsh though. So maybe we go like, or wait, maybe we should even even lighter. Ah! Okay, that's a little too big. Now the hierarchy feels weird. Whatever. Those are the vibes. I don't condone doing this instead of writing. Focus on your writing. <laughs> but if you want to do something to procrastinate, um, if you want to do mood boards for, I don't know, Twitter, pitch events and stuff like that, hopefully it's fun. I really need to write. This is, I I'm gonna start writing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was just rebranding those screens. You say you wanna make it happen. You know what I want. Hi, kitty. Oh, you're a sleepy girl. Oh, you're a sleepy girl. I feel like I'm ready to write, but the problem is that I keep going back to my notes and finding things that I feel like I need to flesh out before I can actually write. Um, so just some things about the magic system. So that's what I was, that I, that's what I've been working on, but I feel like I just need to write. I just wasn't sure if chapter two was exciting enough. I think I I still really like chapter one. Um, I mean, the, the prose is like extremely first draft prose, but I'm not rereading it. I'm not gonna edit it right now. I don't know, maybe this is where I will end the vlog because I don't know how long this is gonna take me. I'm having a pretty busy week at work. I threw maybe like the first three to five chapters of this draft um like hopefully that is something that i can do writing a few chapters um hopefully can get to that as fast as possible and i haven't actually discussed this project in depth with my agent I do want to kind of get some material to her i'm not like rushing or anything like that but i do at some point want to get something to her if not sample pages then definitely a pitch um, because before I started writing my new cyberpunk book, she had just like a few comments um, on that pitch. So I think it'll be helpful for her to just kind of get her eyes on this pitch and to see if it's something that she finds interesting, if she has any notes on it. Um, and yeah, but when we had our offer call, I did tell her kind of like what I wanted to do in the fantasy realm. She knows, <laughs> but it is kind of like, I do like to keep my agent in the loop on things just because like, you know, I just, I value her opinion. The other crazy discussion that I've been seeing, well, it's not that crazy, but I think there's just kind of like fatigue with the way that things are labeled in publishing. So for the past few years, Romanticy has been selling very well. I've seen a lot of book deals. I've seen this on a lot of manuscript wish lists and stuff like that. I did I have been hearing opinions about like, oh, editors are tired of the phrase romanticy, which is very interesting because I think readers are still very much interested in reading romanticy. So I'm very curious if um how romanticy is just gonna be rebranded <laughs> over the next few years because before it was called romanticy, it was just called romance fantasy or fantasy romance so who knows maybe people will just be 
not using that word anymore but it's essentially going to be the same kinds of stories i don't know after much deliberation i don't know i still don't know if at this point i am comfortable pitching this as a romanticy because first of all i don't read much of it and i always get nervous like pitching something that i don't read a lot of but i can i won't know how much romance this book actually has until i actually write it i just know historically that i get very distracted by the plot i am trying to like get these characters to like meet as fast as possible in this draft but the other thing about this pairing um is that they already know each other which i really i really like when characters already know each other prior to the story i just feel like it expedites a lot of things and also there's just so much like fun narrative character exposition that you can do when characters have like a pass. Hopefully I will make some progress. Thank you for joining this vlog. I know it was very short and very boring and I didn't do much but that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you as always for watching. Um, hope all your writing projects are going well. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm gonna give you the world, now it's pushing it. I'm gonna give you my time, start booking it. Nowadays we turn away from all the ushy gushy shit. Everybody looking for love, but never look at it.